Oh, welcome to the Wolfden Pod. How are you guys? I'm good, Holy Lettuce. Thank you. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Sure. Uh, this came up from a tweet. Yes. Uh, a couple days ago. I don't know why. I don't know what the relevance is. Uh, oh, I guess the relevance is that there's a lot of cool stuff in Nintendo Switch Online right now. Yes. Uh, I'm going to hit this button. Will it work? So Hooray! This is just a random tweet that I saw. Uh, enough time has passed. Nintendo Switch Online greater than a uh, virtual console. Right. And I have to say, I agree a little bit. I think, I think that they both have their pros and cons. Mm-hmm. I, I don't also know, agree. I don't know if the one is necessarily better than the other, but I think, I think initially we were upset because virtual console, the, the virtual console model was good. Yeah, the virtual console was awesome, and we, I don't think anybody really had a problem with it when it launched. No, no. And then, but then Switch Online came, came along and said, uh, it's going to be a subscription service where we provide the games as long as you're subscribed to the service, you have access to the games. You have to connect to the internet once a week in order to play the games. Um, and the library was limited. The library is still a little limited, but I think now we've reached a point where like, it's worth the money. It was cool when Nintendo Switch Online first launched. There were 20 games and there were... Well, no, no. There were 20 games each console. No. How did it launch first? I'm now drawing a blank. It was NES. It was NES and SNES. Uh, yeah, no. It was NES. And then later was SNES. Okay. And then Yeah, it, it started with 20 games. Yeah. And then they did... Did they do 20 for SNES? I don't think so. Why am I drawing a blank here? The 20 NES games... Were, there were a lot of bad games. Yeah. And it made me realize there just weren't that many good NES <laughs> games. Um, but they had the important ones, which is all the Mario games. Yeah. Uh, and then SNES did the same thing, and I think SNES uh, was pretty decent. Yeah. The SNES... Uh, f- yeah, no, it was 20 games for SNES. But that debuted like a year later. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah. So... It was incredibly limited at first. 20 games is a lot, but not when you're thinking about all retro games. Yeah. And Nintendo has a lion's share of the retro stuff. Yeah. So it was 20 only NES games felt extremely limited. Also, yeah. because a lot of them just weren't that good. We got like every sports game and those we were got, all pretty Yeah, bad. and it wasn't even like that all the heavy hitters right out of the gate. Like we got Mario Brothers and Mario Brothers 3 but we didn't get Metroid until a few months later. We didn't get like uh, Zelda 2 until the next year. We didn't get uh, Kid Icarus and Star Tropics until the next year. We didn't get Punch Out until the next year. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Like they, the rollout was very slow. Yes. And I think especially on like NES, uh, it reached a point where the release had like slowed to a crawl. Mm -hmm. they were really like hitting the bottom of the barrel with like the games they were releasing on it like scat (laughs) special cybernetic attack team yes especially compared to like virtual console had it had scat but it had the mega man games the castlevania games the contra games you know all the games uh that you expect to be part of an nes library that weren't on switch online partially because it took so long to get up and running that konami and capcom and all the other companies are like let's do it ourselves," and they did so i found a list of virtual console games yes uh because i'm starting to remember now virtual console they also did a slow rollout they every week they would have new games three the, a week three a week yeah. okay uh but if you look at the list this is for the wii in mm-hmm. north america just a regular old wii so it started in 2006 there are a ton of games yeah. on here. Comparatively, though, there's also a ton of games on Nintendo Switch Online. Like, you think about it, you wouldn't expect it to be this many. But yeah. altogether, there are quite a lot of games. Mm-hmm. And even on Switch Online, they have um, the SP version of games. Where, like, it's towards the end of the game, you get all the unlockables. or like. Oh, so this counts some games twice. Because yeah. that doesn't count as two yeah. games. <laughs> <laughs> or it shouldn't count as two games. Yeah. yeah, some SP or special versions uh, had like uh, little special challenges. Like, yeah. Uh, like it'll drop you at the end of the game or, it'll, or uh, give you a certain item or something yeah. that you need for the game. Which is cool. It's like a different way to play a game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
I, initially, I was thinking we're getting close to the way that things were with Virtual Console, but Virtual Console had a lot more third party stuff. That yeah, I think, that, and I think uh, that's Nintendo the big Switch thing. Is missing. Yeah. There is beginning to get some third party stuff. Like, I'm surprised Capcom gave them the Mega Man uh, Game Boy games. Yes. We got a bunch of Sega games. Yeah, that, there's a whole Sega Genesis yeah. part on that's Switch very Online, which is incredible. Yeah. Uh, but we also had stuff like that on uh, Virtual Console. Yeah. Uh, there were a bunch of Sega There were Genesis, Genesis games. games. There were Master Sister games. There we, were Turbo Graphics games. We have, what, what's, we got Comic Zone, and Splatterhouse. Yeah. Gunstar uh, Heroes. Gunstar Heroes. And Bonk's Adventure. Bonk's Adventure. None of those are Nintendo games. No. <laughs> no, because I remember I downloaded those games because this is when, like, the Virtual Console first came out. And Nintendo actually did something really interesting. They didn't release their games first. Mm-hmm. Well, they did, but then, like, they quickly pivoted to the Genesis and the Turbo Graphics games to, like, boost those profiles. So, like, you know, when we got our Wii and we got access to Virtual Console, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking download some Turbo Graphics games. I wanna play these games. That's interesting because we got ours in February of 2007. Yeah. And uh, Comic Zone released in January 29th of 2007. So, mm. you must have just immediately downloaded Comic mm. Zone. <laughs> so glad I did. Terrible game. Bad game. Never it's, got past like the first two pages. Uh, it, if we ever talk about it on the backlog, I I got some thoughts about that. Do game. virtual console games count? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there were a lot. Uh, actually, yeah, I think. Oh no, that was just the Sega Genesis section. Yeah. But yeah, no, there were a a lot of third party stuff, and that's why I think people like virtual console the most. But I think also too, people like virtual console, uh, because. You buy the game, and that's it. There's none of this. You're not beholden to a subscription that's, service. That's the biggest. Once you buy a game, like it. It, you, the game is yours. Yeah. yeah. With Switch Online, you are beholden to this um, Nintendo Switch Online subscription. If you lose your subscription or you don't renew your subscription, you lose access to the games. Um, the N64 games and the Genesis games and the Game Boy Advance games are not included in the base subscription. You have to pay an additional fee. For yes. the plus the expansion pack subscription, which is even more money. Meanwhile, um, Virtual Console had N64 games. They right? had N64 games. They were at a higher price, but you know, you just had them. You could just get them. Yeah. And so, because it's Switch Online subscription, it is tied to an internet connection. You do have to uh, connect to the internet at least once per week in order to verify that you have a valid account. Whereas with Virtual Console, if you lose internet access, you still have the game. Right. I do know that people also like Virtual Console because this is on a technical level and this is real nerd shit. But the games that uh, were downloaded, the emulator that they were using ran them in the native 240p resolution. And because of that, and because the Switch was an SD, the, the because the Wii was an SD console... You can use it with um, popular upscalers like the Frame Meister and the OSSC mm-hmm. to like get really good picture quality on like a modern TV. I will say that Nintendo Switch Online gets a lot of crap for their bad emulation quality. Yeah, uh, particularly I, the N64. I think it's a little overblown. I think that N64 is already pretty hard to yeah. emulate, so uh, it's already going to be pretty bad. Yeah. Um. The Wii wasn't necessarily like much better. Yeah. It just what you said, the resolution was a little easier to scale because then yeah. you just had to double it. Yeah. That's all you had to do for that. Mm-hmm. Um but it does a pretty decent job on uh Nintendo Switch Online. And there is yeah. the issues that people had with like uh the the fog in in Zelda, yeah. uh Ocarina of Time, they changed it. They patched it. Yeah, they're it. they're patching it. I know um they're constantly I think doing recently stuff. Perfect Dark like wasn't a good emulation job, but like the thing about it being online What, what was it, wrong with Perfect Dark? It felt fine to me. There was some like like a I, graphical I glitch here or there, but like literally every emulator I've ever played that game on does the same thing. I saw one like twi- th- tw- uh, Twitter thread. It was like the the drug defect you get in the second level, like the blur that occurs is like too blurry. You can't see anything. Um, That's the point. The, of light, the, <laughs> the, the light fixtures in one of the levels is like too bright. Like you, you, uh, your gun, when it passes over it, 
like gets completely blocked by the mm-hmm. light instead of like your gun like literally blocking the light. It's like little things like that yeah. here and there that like could be fixed with like updates. And that's the good thing about it being online is that it can get patched. It can get fixed down the road. Yeah. So I really do like the way that uh, Game Boy Advance games look. Yeah. With their own little pixel grid uh, filter. It looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, so playing those on a big TV feels really good. Uh, one of my biggest issues is the control schemes, especially for Nintendo yeah. 64. Uh, there's not much you can do to mess around with the control schemes. And they kind of give certain games some control schemes that are just not. Yeah. It just don't make much sense. I mean... And I didn't they let you play around more with the virtual console I believe they did some I mean because the Wii your standard controller was the Wii remote and that was really only good for like NES games uh turbo graphics games and like some Genesis games but they offered a classic controller they offered the GameCube controller to use for some games like they gave you options to like mess around and like try to make the game work for you the big thing with Switch Online is like Especially with N64 games, like, they pre-map them for you. Yeah. And, like, for a lot of games, it's cumbersome and it doesn't feel right. To the point where, like, Nintendo, like, thought ahead and was like, we'll just resell the controllers that we made originally. Yeah. I do think it's cool that they offer the controllers. Uh, yeah. And they're pretty, they're extremely close to yeah. the original controllers. And they feel really nice. But they're a little expensive. Yeah. And they are only available if you have a Nintendo Switch Online subscription and if you buy them directly from them. Yeah. Whereas the classic controller and stuff for the Wii and the Wii U, you can get from Best Buy. Yeah. And, you know, you can get it on sale and stuff. You can get it used. Mm-hmm. Uh, the controllers for Nintendo Switch Online, you need to buy each individual one. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't need to, I guess. You can you can use a regular old Pro Controller. You don't need to use those controllers. Yeah. But uh, I'm not exactly happy with the way that they handled selling those individual controllers. Yeah. Um, I'll say, though, there are currently 36 Nintendo 64 games on Nintendo Switch Online. The Wii only had 21. Wow. Yeah, so Switch Online Switch Online, there. according to Wikipedia, Switch, there are several uh, titles that were not available on Virtual Console that are now available on Switch Online, like Pilot Wings 64. Oh, it's not on a virtual console. So that's that's the thing about, you know, I think because the Switch is so immensely popular that they're able to add more games to it mm-hmm. than they were able to in the past. Like games that were limited to Japan, you know, now they have a wider audience, especially because the Switch is region free. You can access the Japanese uh, Switch online. Yeah, that's been really cool. Games. Yeah. One of the arguments I've seen for Nintendo Switch Online is that people are playing games that they never would have otherwise yeah. because it's just included in the subscription yeah. and they could just play around. And, and that is true. Like, I get more excited. Uh, I mean, it was pretty exciting to see what new games would pop up on Virtual Console every week. That, yeah. There's a whole song about it. Yeah. Um, but it's also exciting whenever something drops on Nintendo Switch Online because yeah. I can just play it even if I don't... Uh, if I wouldn't have bought it otherwise, I can just jump in and see what's up. Yeah, it, like it gives people the ability to just hop in. And, like, that's how I played Super Metroid. I don't think I would have played it otherwise unless Nintendo, like, offered it to me. Fucking win back. Oh, win- I've played, like, a lot of win That's back. the thing. Like, we would like we would rent it from Blockbuster back yeah. in the day because we, we, we were N64 kids. And that was the closest we had to Metal Gear at the time. And like years go by and we would joke about it and make fun of it because <laughs> it's fucking win back. Who cares? And then it's on Switch Online and you play it even for like 15 minutes and you're like, hey, this ain't that bad. I actually kind of really, <laughs> I, I played bad. it as a meme yeah. and I was like, wait a minute. I actually <laughs> like, really like this game. There's something to this game. Yeah. yeah like, and that would have never happened. It's dated as hell. Yes. But like you stick with it. Like. It's got something. And the thing is that I have a million different ways to play games like Winback. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I've had it on an emulator before. We have the PS2 version of Winback. Yeah. As a joke. Yes. We bought it as a joke. <laughs> but I have a million ways to play all of these games. But when they drop on Nintendo Switch Online, I get excited because it's yeah. an official way to play it. It's usually really nice and, and, and clean and pretty and the emulation is good. And it's just super easy because yeah. it's right there. It's on my Switch. I can play it on the TV. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to mess around with save files or anything. It's yeah. just, everything's there and ready to go. So that gets me really excited. Uh, one of the other arguments that I heard was that uh, 
people say, like you said earlier, with Virtual Console, you buy one of the games and you just own it. Yeah. It's yours. So they can't like take it off of Nintendo Switch Online. Mm-hmm. It's yours. That, that, that you have it. Uh, but your Virtual Console games do not transfer. Uh, so your Wii Virtual Console games did not transfer to the Wii U. They only did if you you could upload all of your uh, Wii data to the Wii U, but it was locked in a Wii emulator, uh, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Wii U had its own virtual console, but you had to buy the games again, and the Wii U didn't have all the games. They didn't have Genesis games. They didn't have Turbo Graphics. It had games. significantly less. So yeah. the Wii in North America had 427 games, according to Wikipedia, mm-hmm. and the Wii U in north america had three where would it go 318 games yeah that's significantly less that's over 100 less games Mm -hmm. uh but you could move your like if you want a comic zone yeah on the wii u Mm -hmm. how would you do it you're saying you upload your data to the wii u yeah and it would run it in a virtual it would run it in a a virtual virtual Wii. wii yeah and it would have comic zone yeah I did not know that. Yeah. But it was like a pain in the ass. You had to like... Oh, it literally says it right here. Yeah. Uh, As of February 2019, the Wii Shop channel users can still continue to re-download previous purchased content and or transfer re-data over to a Wii U via the Wii U transfer tool. Okay, so first of all... Oh, yeah. If you still own it, you can download it still. Um, But if you're on a Wii U, you need to use the transfer tool. The Wii U transfer tool if purchased from the Wii Shop channel. So that would be the only way to do it. Wolf Den Dad in the chat is really, really jonesing for the win. Oh, God. To the win hotel in Vegas. Win back? He, not- he heard win back. We triggered him. Christ. Oh, my God. I just saw a picture of um, Aaron Moriarty, who plays uh, Starlight on the boys. Uh, oh, she, okay. she was at the win. Oh. And she's, and according to her Instagram, she's worse than my dad, our dad. Is with all the hashtags and stuff like being at the win. Should I watch the boys? I, I'm more and more interested, but there's I, four seasons. Yeah, that's a I'm lot. in the same boat. Like, I guess I should watch the boys, but like, I don't have the time to watch. I'm behind <laughs> on literally everything. Like, come on, come on. So how many? So we have four twenty-seven on Wii. We got three eighteen on Wii U. How many do we? Two hundred eighty-two. I had you know. Yeah, I had to do math because, like, Wikipedia does it by system. Okay. So. They're catching up. Yeah. So, I am not all that happy with Nintendo Switch Online. I wish it was different. Yeah. I, I wish that uh, it was all one app. I don't know why it's segmented it between different yeah. systems. It does look kind of cool, though, when you have them all on the home screen. In yeah. A, in, a, in a row. And but- it does suck that the mature... And 64 games are in a different app. That's really That's, bizarre. Yeah. That's really bizarre. Um, I wish there were other games in it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure more will come. I'm sure with Virtual Console, I would have wished for more games too. Yeah. Uh, I wish the control schemes were better. I wish that you didn't have to be online. I don't know. I mean, the big argument is owning the games, buying them individually, mm-hmm. or having a subscription service that just has all of them. Yeah. And... I don't like this world that we live in where everything is a subscription service. Yeah. Uh, I would like to have the option to do either one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got to say, I don't hate the subscription service. It's pretty cheap. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be honest. This is probably, you know, the way to do a subscription service, at least for video games. Have the classic stuff. Because as we're seeing with Game Pass, you know, have putting the new stuff on there is a financial burden. Like people... Yeah. You know, we'll play that and not buy the game, and therefore the studios could potentially risk losing millions of dollars that they need to survive. Well, Nintendo has been doing their, uh, what do they call it, a trial period, where like yeah. if you have Nintendo Switch Online one random weekend, they'll just give you a game for free. Right. Uh, but you can only do it for that, you can only play the game for that weekend. And that seems like a promotional thing. Like maybe yeah. a game isn't doing too good, or they want people to get excited about a game and try it for yeah. themselves, and maybe they'll eventually hopefully buy it. Uh, that is a good way to promote some games that maybe aren't mm-hmm. making that much money. And that's something that Xbox and PlayStation could think about instead of uh, being a financial burden yeah. to them. Um, so, yeah. I, again, I have issues with Nintendo Switch Online. I'm not like 
It's not like my favorite thing in the world, yeah. but I don't hate it. I'm sure that also now we have so many more options. There's so many more games now. Years ago when it launched, it kind of sucked because there weren't really that many games. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of stuff that was missing. There was a lot of whole systems that were missing. Yeah. Now we have a pretty decent selection of systems. Uh, I still wish there was more. I still wish there was GameCube. And stuff. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with what we got. I went nuts when I got Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Uh, that was really what I was missing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, I'm pretty good with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I still wish that there was an option to buy games individually. Well, but... it'll be interesting to see what happens... When this, when the next Switch comes out, the successor, as it were, yeah, you know, because they, you know, all the rumors suggest that it's going to be backwards compatible. So I'd imagine all this stuff transfers over, and if that's the case, you know, hopefully that makes it possible f to grow Switch Online and add more games, maybe add GameCube games. Finally, I would like it all to be in one app. Yeah, yeah, just one big app, mm -hmm. and uh have an extra section if you have the expansion pass. Mm -hmm. That way, people who don't have the expansion pass, they could look around in it and be like, oh, I want to play Perfect Dark. Oh, yeah. wait, I can't. I need to upgrade. You mm -hmm. know, and then they know they need to upgrade. That'll make things less confusing. Also, this whole time, I've completely forgot you could play these fucking games online. And playing online yeah. is pretty damn sick. The online net code is really bad. But <laughs> uh, a lot of the people I play with usually have pretty good internet anyway. Yeah. So uh, it's not so bad. Playing mm -hmm. with randoms, not fun. Don't yeah. do that. But playing Never with friends, uh, if you all have pretty good internet, uh, it's great. Being yeah. able to like have somebody else experience Perfect Dark with you is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, recently just played the Four Swords, and that was pretty cool. Uh, that's something I never would have ever done on a Game Boy Advance yeah. because you need another person with a Game Boy Advance. Yeah. I think you. I think everybody needs the game, right? Yeah. It's one of those yeah. games. Uh, and you need a link cable. Nobody has. Yeah. So like, uh, this made it way easier to play. And and. It's such a weird niche thing that game because the the multiplayer mode is a roguelike. Yeah, and I would have you lose out on that whole part of that game that mm -hmm. rarely anybody played because yeah. there's so there's so much more hardware you need for that, uh, and you get to do it with with uh, Nintendo Switch Online very very easily. Same thing with um the Super Mario Three e reader levels. On, on yeah. Game Boy Advance. Uh, what is it? Super Mario World 4, Super Mario Super Brothers Mario 3. Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3. Yes. Uh, you get all of the e-reader levels. They're yeah. just there. And that's something that was also locked behind uh, hardware that was impossible to find. Yeah. So almost nobody played all of the e-reader levels back then. So mm -hmm. uh, now you basically get Super Mario Brothers 3 with all new levels. Yeah. Uh, and that wasn't available previously so. uh uh but i think that was on virtual console actually uh because i have a rom that says it's from virtual console <laughs> yes it was on the wii u eShop. yeah so it's important that there's a service like this at all whether yeah. it be virtual console or nintendo switch online but i'm not hate listen nintendo the reason we're having this conversation at all is because nintendo switch online had such a bad rap yeah uh, but i think it's gotten a lot better yeah no it certainly has um, i don't hate the emulation quality uh the only thing that i hate really about the technology is the netcode i think yeah. it, i think it's pretty bad i think you know the other day my friends were talking about it they wanted to play the games and i said that honestly the because most of my friends don't play online hmm. i said honestly the subscription price is worth it for the game collection yeah but i'm still trepidatious about the price for the expansion pack yeah it's very easy to recommend the original because it's only yeah. 20 dollars for the year yeah That's nothing for how many games you get yeah the expansion pack is significantly more if it brings it's that whole price up to 50 yeah now you get you do kind of get a lot you get N64 games, Genesis games, Game Boy Advance games, plus DLC for a lot of your pre-existing Switch games like Mario Kart and um, Animal Crossing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's still a significant leap in price. And are those games worth it to you? Especially like with Genesis games, most of those Genesis games were previously available on Switch via the Sega Genesis collection. And that was, and that's typically on sale for like thirty dollars regularly yeah a lot of these games you can find somewhere else but a yeah. lot of them you can't yeah so uh 
I think fifty dollars for the whole thing with the expansion pass is still not that much when you're considering uh how expensive subscription services are these days. Yeah. But it's so much easier to just say twenty dollars. Yeah. If these people don't care about N sixty four games or Game Boy Advance games, mm-hmm. you can save a couple bucks. But uh I think the N sixty four library is pretty sick. And the Game yeah. Boy Advance. I I didn't realize Game Boy Advance was also oh, part yeah. of the expansion. Uh I think some of my f- favorite games are the Game Boy Advance games. Yeah. I've been having the most fun with the Game Boy Advance stuff. Um, what if the price increases in the future? It will. It probably, will. It generally. always does. You know, I think Nintendo has been surprisingly good at like keeping it consistent. But, you know, just, just wait. It'll, it'll go up. <laughs> yeah, it will almost certainly go up. Yeah. Uh, because they keep adding stuff, but also because inflation. Everything's yeah. just getting more expensive. Um, so, there you go. I thought we were going to have a lot more of an argument about uh, the value of virtual console, but things have changed a lot. Yeah. It has gone a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. Has I think Switch better. Online has become like a good uh, f- replacement for virtual console. Yeah. Obviously, the choice to buy the games versus like have them all locked behind a subscription service um, is one that still needs to be had, but I think for what it is, Switch Online is good. Uh, Matt, Bat Mabel in the YouTube chat says the only problem with Nintendo Switch Online is that we don't know what will happen when Nintendo stops supporting the service. We don't own any of the games and have no option to do well, so. Well, we know what's going to happen. You're going to lose access to the games. And Nintendo yeah. is, you know, somewhat notorious for just like, yeah, it, no more. <laughs> I think that's the issue is that they can just remove games. And that could have happened on Virtual Console, yeah. but you would have still had the option to download the game even right. if they removed it and mm-hmm. purchased it already. So that's one good argument for having a piecemeal service where you can buy the games. Individually. But as far as I know, they haven't removed anything. No. No. But, I mean, a lot of the stuff's licensed, so there yeah. is a huge possibility That's true. That, that happens, especially when they move over to the next console. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. I think we uh I think it's unanimous. Everybody loves Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. 